episode it's happening um welcome or welcome back uh to my knitting youtube channel i i've been trying this month to come up with a new name for the podcast and i just i just can't i just can't i was like i'm gonna be doing these monthly check-ins i wanted to come up with like a name i don't have a name so my name is jessica and this is my podcast um and i'm gonna talk to you about knitting stuff today uh yeah do i have anything else to say it's been a a bit of a all over the place month with knitting um i feel like i've got got a lot done got a lot of projects that have like come out of retirement feeling good about that um yeah not in like the most filming mood today but this is the only day that i have free to do it um until the end of january so we're gonna do it so please bear with me um i'm surrounded by little project bags and i'm gonna talk about everything there's one thing that i made that i don't have with me because it was a gift um but i filmed a little segment so i will put that in at some point um so yeah let's get cracking grab a cup of tea grab your knitting projects uh and yeah listen to me talk about my things that i'm making right okay i'm gonna start with this bag this is a amazing tote from the by pocket fiber people that i got from the scottish yarn festival two years ago um it's a great tote bag very large flat bottom which we love um, and it has a little pocket a little pocket um, and in here are two projects that am i out of focus let me just i hope i'm in focus if i'm not i'm sorry um in here are two projects that are gonna be frogged they're gonna be frogged so this is the frog pond bag at the moment um those of you that were watching my vlogmas will potentially recognize this item uh this is the self-drafted knitted hood that i was making um out of some leftover row work um row work something that i'll put in the in the little description box um i just didn't work out it wasn't i'll put it on for you now it's it's giving balaclava and i wanted it to give hood uh so <laughs> it's just i mean i've got a massive clip in so it does look a bit funny but uh <laughs> yeah it's a bit tighter to the head than i had wanted my goal with this was to make something that i could wear that wouldn't like flatten my hair um and this definitely did not achieve that so i'm gonna unravel it and i've actually just started giving up and just wearing a hat because it's been really cold and windy um in edinburgh so i've actually just been wearing a little hat that i made um and also using the hood of my jacket because it's that cold and windy um i'm just gonna play with my hair some more oh it's a weird hair day oh it's a weird hair day pause bear with bear with basically back where we were before but i really can't tell if i'm in focus or not because every time i lean forward to check it is what it is it is what it is what it is what it is i'm gonna unravel this uh and then yeah i'm not in a rush to like remake a hood i've been seeing a lot of bonnets recently uh i I've not really thought about making a bonnet and now suddenly my like Instagram page and my TikTok page are full of bonnets. So potentially that's, I'll make a bonnet out of this. Um, Cause it is kind of just the right, it's a good amount of yarn. It's probably actually too much for a bonnet, but yeah, didn't work out so well. So that's getting a little frog, uh, but thanks for <laughs> sticking around for the journey, frog next thing for christmas 
I was gifted. Was gifted makes it sound like it was from like the company. It was from my parents. Um, ten balls, quite a lot of balls of this. Uh, Hardwick, Herdwick, Aaron, and is that what they're all called? Oh, they're all called different. That's the name of the yarn. It's from a place called Tamarisk Farm, organic wool, uh, based in Dorset. Um, and I got it in a few different shades. Uh, these three, that's the same. There is a third, there's actually a fourth. Let me, I'm really digging around in the back here. It might be that they're actually, oh, there we go, right. So it's an Aran weight, I would say it's quite a heavy Aran. Um, it doesn't say on the ball band what like the recommended needle is and I've tried it with quite a few needles which you will soon see um and I feel like I've not quite cracked it I'm not quite you'll see but I have it in this gray slate color um and then I'm honestly this is then the next shade <laughs> slightly darker and then this like chocolatey and then also in this cream so the pattern that I started making was an Albina McLaughlin pattern, which I cannot pronounce the name of, so I'm gonna put it in the thing. Uh, it's a cardigan jacket style thing. Um, as we know, or as those of you that have seen my ins and outs for 2024 will know, gauge swatching is in. I'm wanting to actually make garments that fit how I intended them to fit. This cast on was pre that decision. So I did not gauge swatch. I just, I got the yarn on Christmas day and I wanted to start knitting with it immediately. So I found this pattern. It wasn't at all, I was like, I'll just make it work. I think it was a worsted weight pattern, but this is not a worsted weight. It's not a worsted weight yarn as much as I tried. So this is the first attempt. Uh, I knit it at a worsted, more of a worsted gauge. I think I used like a four millimeter or a four and a half millimeter. And the fabric is not awfully tight, but it was quite unpleasant to knit, uh, which is also out for 2024, just because the gauge was so tight. Um, so I gave up on that. I had actually done quite a bit. I'd knit all the way through one of these color balls, I think two of these, and then just started on the next color. Um, my plan was to kind of go light to dark gray and then do cream for the bottom and for like these sleeve bits on the cardigan. Um, but I was not enjoying the process. So I was like, we gotta, we gotta try something else. So then I started the same project again, this time with the cream on top using a much, much bigger, a much, much bigger needle size. I think it was like a 5.5 or like, I just really jumped up quite a lot. Um, and this was much, much more pleasant to knit. Uh, but I tried it on and it's just way too big. Like, it's just not what I want. I even like changed, I think I went down like two sizes. The proportions are just not right. Like, it's a very cool construction um, it's kind of like saddle shoulder or it kind of goes out like this and then into a raglan which I really like um, but it just doesn't work when the proportions aren't right because it's made for a completely different gauge so this one kind of also ended and as I was adding the next color in I was kind of trying to do this like blending in and color work type thing I think I also realized that I hadn't landed on a way of using all the different colors in a way that felt nice. I think I, I like things that are all one color. Um, so yeah, I'm wondering about what the best thing to do with that is because I want to use the yarn, but um, yeah, I have not found the right pattern. I'm wondering if it'll be like a vest or I could always order more of one of the colors. I've found the company online so this is a bit of a don't know what to do with it situation 
Um, yeah. Lots of lovely colours. If anyone has any recommendations for Aran weight patterns that incorporate lots of different colours but don't feel overwhelming visually, <laughs> I don't want like too much going on, uh, please let me know because I've not I've not cracked it. I do really like the cardigan pattern though, so I'm wondering about getting the actual right weight of yarn for it and making making it. So that's that. Stay tuned. Uh, it's kind of low down the priority list at the moment, the figuring out what to do with this because I've got other stuff going on that I want to make and I want to finish, but it's nice to have like a large quantity of yarn waiting for a project when I find out what the right thing to do is. So we'll figure it out. We'll get there. Okay, next thing, next thing, next thing. This is, is this the project that I'm most excited about at the moment? Potentially. I'm definitely most excited about this being finished and also most curious because I don't really know. I've read the pattern quite a few times. I don't really understand how it's all gonna come together, but I'm just trusting the process. This is an oldie but a goodie. If you've been around for a while, you've seen it. It's the Marit cardigan. Uh, it is coming on. I wanted to pick this up again because I remembered that I had it and wanted to finish it. Um, it's really beautiful. And also it is made with yarns. So this is Samila Melange something, 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 sport weight, uh, a fave. And this is John Arben Exmoor sock in all of the different colors for the contrast colors. Um, and these are yarns that are, oh God. <laughs> it's really not happening with the hair today. Please excuse the like 3 million different hair arrangements during this. We're not, it's not working today, but that's fine. Uh, I'm in an awkward, awkward hair stage <laughs> right now. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this is the Marit cardigan. It's made with yarns that are stocked at a yarn shop where I've just started working a few days a month. So that's very exciting. Um, yeah, I might talk about that more another time. But first we've got a fixture situation. But I was like, okay, I want to finish this so that I can wear it in the shop and talk about how much I love the yarns. So yeah, it's coming along. I wish I'd put a project marker, a project marker, a stitch marker, like a locking stitch marker where I picked it back up again because it had been away for ages. I think I cast this on like two years ago. I finished both of the sleeves. I did the sleeves first, even though that's not what the pattern says. Um, but I did them first, uh, I think partially because I was just copying. Claire at Pearlwise because I think that's what she did um, and also because it's quite a good way to just like get to grips with the pattern quite quickly because it's a much smaller circumference um, and then when you come to do this you kind of you know you understand it a bit better so I enjoyed doing that um, yeah I think I was maybe at the top of this green thing so I think I've done that much since I've picked it back up again which it's knit on three millimeter needles so quite an accomplishment. I'm feeling good about it. Um, and yeah, that's just kind of like cracking on. I think I've got quite a bit to go. Uh, I don't want it to be like super long, but I also don't really want it to be super cropped. Like it's not a cropped style garment. Uh, so I might just follow exactly what the measurements are, what the pattern suggests in terms of like length. I usually take a little bit off from what people suggest for length because I just well depending on the style but like if it's something that is designed like full length I usually take a bit off just to take it above just so it sits like around where like my jeans might be the top of my jeans uh so I, yeah 
don't know what I'm going to do with this. I recently swapped it um, from being on my Chowgu minis with the like really short tips to being on these like Knit Pro wooden guys that I had as an interchangeable set to see if having the slightly longer needle to have a bit more grip on it would help me with my speed <laughs> to be it faster. Um, and I, I literally just did that, so I don't know if it's going to make any difference, but I might end up switching back to the metal one. So we'll see, this is happening and I'm happy about it. It's back in, back in rotation. Um, I'm kind of running low on some of the contrast colors. So I'm a, I only had got one skein of each, but if I run out, I can just buy them, buy them next time I'm in the shop. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm going to buy them as and when we need. And this is in a little project bag that I got from Etsy that I don't think is selling anymore. So enjoy, but I cannot link it for you. Um, yes. Great. We've got one more thing on this side and then I'm going to talk about my advent project uh, and then I'm going to go and keep cleaning my room. Then we're done. January update. Finished. This is a project that I cast on in October for the end of the third so October knit along um, and it's a pair of socks <laughs> and I've definitely shown them before. Um, it's the DRK everyday sock with an added color work panel which I uh, copied off of a picture of something that I really liked um, and this is the first one and I finished it and I love it and I'm on the second one I've just I've turned the heel and I've just started the color work for the um, leg <laughs> what is this bit called the cuff um, I've just started the cuff um, so yeah, that's also happening. I would like to finish these relatively soon because wool sock season is only a few more months now, fingers crossed. Um, and it would be nice to get a bit of wear out of them before the end of the season. So yeah, that's like a kind of ticking along, like easy-ish project, but it's not, I don't really have a project at the moment that's like portable and easy to work on. Um, because this has like three different yarns that are involved, so it's a bit like da, 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 which is what I loved about this, excuse me, which is what I loved about this project was that it was like a lot of stuff net and a lot of like simple increases and I really kind of understood what was going on and it was just one colour and I could just, it was a good one for like choir practice, that sort of thing. Um, so I would like to, yeah pick up a project that's like that that's maybe the gap that I have in my knitting at the moment um yeah socks they're happening not that much to say I feel like I've been carrying this around for ages so the sock that's already finished kind of looks like it needs a wash already even though it's not been worn um I'm very excited to finish them both give them a wash block them all of that business okay last project this is my advent project. It's the Traveller hoodie by, oh now it looks really sad and bare. <laughs> it's the Traveller hoodie by Andrea Mowry and I have finished the body. Now I kind of, so the advent yarn is from uh, my stash rent swap, swappy, swap person uh, who made this lovely kind of gradient fade sort of situation for me um the advent ended about ended here and then this is all yarn from my own stash it's mostly leftovers from uh my mystery knit long from this year um and then I did the same on the back so like around here is where the advent finished then I had to add a little bit so it wasn't quite enough of the colours to do a stripe in every colour to get me to where I wanted to be. Again, I've made this quite cropped, but apparently it blocks out quite a lot because of the like compressed nature of the stitch pattern. So 
it will end up maybe not being like crazy cropped, but just like normal cropped. Um, but I have lots of the little bits of yarn left over. I put them all in these little paper bags that I had left over from adverts from other years. Um, and I put them like roughly in order. They've got a little bit chaotic, but I don't know quite how I'm gonna integrate them all into the sleeves because there's like some have like not much left at all and some have loads left so that'll be it'll just be less yeah less obvious for the front and back i was kind of able to keep it pretty much with one pearl bump or like pearl ridge for each color which is really nice and very like satisfying um but this is a stash project so it's not going to be perfect color management wise and that's okay um yeah my plan is to knit the hood block it and then make the sleeves so that i know how long i want the sleeves to be um after it's blocked because yeah it's got um a drop sleeve so i'd imagine that blocking it will change the sleeve placement a little bit so i don't want to make them too long or too short or whatever what I'm currently thinking is that I will make the whole hood in this, which is the, I was going to call it Labiani May, but it's not. It's Life in the Long Grass yarn in a colour that I cannot remember theme here, um, but that I talked about a lot in my Mystery Knit Along series. Um, that one of my friends got me from Stephen and Penelope and I've used that for the uh, hem uh, and also for the like bind off here. If I have enough yarn to use this all for the hood, I think that would be nice. Um, and ideally I've got leftover to do the cuffs as well. And it's not loads left, maybe like 60 grams would be my guess. I feel like I've used almost half of it um, on what I've done so far. So we'll see. But yeah, what I'm working on at the moment is knitting the eye cord um, to like be the drawstring, which they, the pattern suggests that you do first. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, and this is in leftovers from the mystery knit along as well. And it's just, I'm just making the eye cord so just i started that this morning so we've just done i think it has to be like 46 inches so we've got a way to go but uh i will get there hopefully couldn't finish that by today um there you go yeah so i hope my goal was to kind of get to the end of this body bit by the end of january and i've done it uh yeah i'm liking it more than i thought that i would like halfway through from kind of here till here, I was like, yes, I love this. Then this little section, I was like, am I actually gonna wear something that's got this many colors on it? But I recently tried it on and like, I actually really love it. Like it's not an everyday item, but <laughs> it's not not wearable. Um, yeah, very different than this current item. This is the Summer League uh, crop, Summer League top sweatshirt thing. Uh, from two of wands and I will link that as well um, in a yarn that I think was like hand spun hand dyed that my friend got from a charity shop so uh, cannot link the yarn but can definitely link and recommend the pattern really enjoyed this one um, yeah that's it put that away hello it's the 13th of January I should take these things beforehand it's the 13th of January um, and I just wanted to film a little thing that I knitted before I gift it tomorrow. Um, if you're watching this, I'm assuming it's like clipped in. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, so this is a little bonnet that I made. Um, I self drafted the pattern based off of a bonnet that I saw one of my friend's kids wearing. Um, that I think had been made for them. There we go. You can see it a little bit better. I'm dark, but you can see the stitches here. Um, it's pretty simple. I will untie it so that you can see, but basically this is where the head would go and it's got a little like peak. 
Um, I knit this in West Yorkshire Spinners, um, color something DK, uh, in like their kind of bright red shade. Um, and I held it double and used, I think 6.5 millimeter needles. Um, I had to crack out my Knit Pro wooden needle set, which was actually not as bad as I remember it being. So that's a learning lesson. Um, and I cast on, on this edge here. No, I didn't. That's a lie. No, I did. <laughs> Getting confused. I cast on on this edge here and then it's like knit back and forth this way. And then there's some short rows like right at the end to kind of create that like peak and to like fit the head slightly better. And then I also did like an eye cord edge, um, which hopefully you can see. So that was like on both sides. So it was like knit big flat. I think I cast on like 52 stitches, I'm gonna say. This is intended for a one-year-old. Um, and then at the end, I picked up stitches here and then knit eye cord for these bits. Um, I kind of wrote up some pattern notes, so if anyone would like them, just send me a message on Instagram. I think that I thought about like writing it up to an actual pattern, but one that feels weird because I didn't invent the pattern, I just copied it off of someone else. Um, and like tried to figure it out myself. Also, if you're a beginner knitter, you probably wouldn't be able to figure out how to do it based off of my notes. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of bonnet patterns out there that are much clearer. But if anyone wants to recreate this and has, I think you need to kind of have a basic knowledge of like German short rows, uh, Kitchener stitch, how to do an eye cord edge. It's not crazy hard, but I didn't write down in that much detail. Um, but yeah, anyway, then you get to the end and then you kind of fold it in half and Kitchener stitch up the side and then you just have to like flip the eye cord stitches the other way on one of the sides so that they line up nicely. Um, yeah, and that's my little bonnet. I think it's really cute and I would definitely make it again. It, I've had a very busy work week and I cast this on two days ago and I finished it last night. So chunky, nice, it feels really soft and I'm pretty sure this yarn is machine washable on low. So that's good for like kids. Anyway, I'm gonna go because I have to get to work. Uh, this afternoon. It's a Saturday um, and I'm doing some teaching and then tomorrow is my first day off in a long time. So I'm excited uh, and I will see you all in just two seconds back in when I'm filming the whole podcast. <laughs> see you. Excuse my sniffing. I really have a cold at the moment and it's very sad and I'm very sad about it uh, and I wish that I did not have the winter illness, but I do. I have the winter illness, so it is what it is. I'm trying to like rest and take it easy today uh, and tomorrow because it's been a crazy work month. I was gonna say it's been a crazy work week, but it's been a crazy work month. January's just been a lot, but good a lot. Like I've got, yeah, my stuff going on. So I'm gonna crack on with cleaning my room cleaning the kitchen, slowing my life out, trying to make things easier for myself once work starts back up again in a few days and maybe get some knitting going on. Well, most of my knitting this month has happened either at choir practice or while watching The Traitors. If anyone's been watching The Traitors, chat with me down below. I'm obsessed. Uh, I'm like considering watching the like Australian and US versions, but I don't know if, I just feel like I get too obsessed again. I just need to take a little break. Um, yeah, those are my things that I've been doing. So that's it. I've also been listening to a lot of audiobooks, really getting back into audiobooks for 2024. It's been good. Yeah, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I'm almost at the end of my allotted time on my memory card for filming. So this has worked out just perfectly. Um, yeah, January can be gross so I hope you're all getting on okay uh yeah the light is trying to come back especially here and do I have anything poignant to say about that <laughs> not really 
Not really, no. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go. I'll see you all next month. Bye.